Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today I've come up with a very stupid idea. Plus, air launch with Saturn V. So, um, that, that's that's going to be the plan. I um, So yeah, basically I just put, uh, uh, put a Saturn V on top of a very, very, very big plane. And um, we're going to be just uh, just launching it um, from the from the sky. Uh, this plane actually might look familiar to some of you guys. It is the aircraft I featured in the 500 ton SSTO video. Uh, so that uh, this plane is theoretically an SSTO, but we we I drained all the oxidizer uh, just so I could lower the weight, uh, so we can actually carry a Saturn V to about uh, 25 kilometers, which uh, maybe I think we deploy a little closer to 30, but. Uh, that's kind of the that's kind of the gist of this of this video where the plane or the the plane's role in this video is we just uh, we just did our takeoff there and now we're going to start accelerating getting some screenshots there very 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 important and then we can, uh, like I said we're going to accelerate up to about uh, 450 meters a second. We're going to use the we're going to use the same profile as we do uh, with just normal SSTOs because these are all these is uh, rapier powered uh, because. You know, they're the most powerful engine, and we need that because Sam Five is like 700 tons, so it is it is not an easy boy to carry to LKO. Booty bing. I should cut that out, right, guys? Just kidding. We have low production value here at Pilot Studios. Um, anywho, let's get back to the video. So, um, we are now accelerating just crossed about, uh, oh my god. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people want to talk to me. That's just news notifications. Uh, but we just uh, crossed 450 meters above 600 meters a second now. We're just accelerating, starting to get some wind effects now across the plane. Now it would be very, very concerning if in real life that started to happen, or if like flames started to started to fly around. That would be that would be a very interesting scenario. But uh, uh, this is KSP, and we can kind of half explode everything on our way up, and uh, life life just rolls on. Uh, this, uh, since we're just, uh, going to cross about seven, eight kilometers, and then we're going to try and pitch down just a little bit through ten kilometers to accelerate, uh, because the period between ten to twenty kilometers is kind of your m most efficient, or your, your, it's kind of the golden band, really, where the rapiers are at really high thrust, but there is not a lot of drag to slow you down, so you can really get some good speed out of that, but, uh, I did actually have an issue with that, so, I may have lied to you guys, so, in some previous outtake bloopers, uh, which, you know, these videos have a lot of bloopers. I find that a lot of the times with YouTube videos, see there, I kind of try and pitch over a little bit, but that's as we're crossing 20 kilometers. A lot of YouTube videos, they seem like they're so polished, like, like everything went right. No, nothing went right in this video. It was very, very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. Uh, but because every time I tried to pitch forward, the plane would kind of start oscillating and then just explode itself and it was not fun what also wasn't fun was our deployment method so for our deployment method of the Saturn V we have to do a barrel roll to get the Saturn V facing down and throughout all this time we're losing speed because I'm not burning the engines so then the so we can kind of get a kind of see what the frame rate was like for me it was not good but now we're gonna go and fire up the Saturn V engines and then we're gonna deploy it we have five. We have six studs on the Britannic firing upward, just so we can get a little bit more clearance, and then we just got to get out of there with the Saturn V. And there we go. We are clear, and then the uh, aircraft down there is just going to crash because it is unimportant, and we can just let the Kerbal die. And uh, now it is just like any other flight uh, with a rocket. We are in just you know we're we're a rocket now. We have those five Macedon engines on the bottom. And then we're just gonna be climbing up and get to an apps of about 100 by 100 kilometers. Um, now, if you if you watched my previous Saturn V video where I took it to Val, it was called like "How far can a Saturn V go?" And a great title, right, guys? Um, it took about the entire bottom stage and then half of the second stage to get into orbit. It was kind of nuts because this launch we used literally half the bottom stage to get into orbit. That's it. Like, that, that, that air launch system saved us literally half of the bottom tank fuel and half of the upper stage, the second stage fuel. Well, basically, 
it, it, we, we saved a lot of Delta V. It is kind of crazy how helpful that was. A lot of it was because we got a lot of speed out of those rapier engines just because they are just awesome engines. And another part of it is just... It's just... It's, it's just... It, it, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just crazy. Like, people have talked about, oh, air launch is bad. Okay, to be honest, air launch is bad. That's it be because normally you can't get a plane up to 30 kilometers, but in this situation, it's great. Like, it's a great idea. Like, we saved, like, hundreds and hundreds, probably over a 1,000 meters a second of Delta V by doing that. It was it was kind of crazy, guys. Um, but we have to take this somewhere, don't we? Like, we can't just go nowhere. And there's a staging way at the bottom stage there, uh, but we, you know, we can't we can't take the Saturn V to nowhere. We have to we have to go somewhere. Um, you know, we're not just going to hang around LKO. We got to use the extra delta V that we saved. So we are going to do actually two landings. So the first one we're going to go to Val, which is the same place we went last time with the Saturn V. But you know, to demonstrate the extra delta V that we have, we are going to be adding a destination. And that's going to be the MUN. So when we come back, we're going to be making a stop off at the MUN before we come back to Kerbin. And uh, we're also uh, not going to be doing any gravity assists. So we're just going to be going straight to Jewel, burning retrograde, lowering our periaps or apoaps around Jewel to match Val's orbit height, and then just circularize around that. Not doing any sort of gravity assist nonsense because we, we are, have all the Delta V in the world to mess around with. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what, what, what kind of the Delta V expenditure you'd be looking at if you were you're going to be doing it like, you know, without gravity assist. And it's totally possible. It's, it's just probably one to 2,000 meters a second more expensive. But thanks to the aircraft, we have that. So we're just going to time warp now down to our dual periaps and then do our burn. Uh, if you look at the Delta V counter in the bottom or just the left-hand side of the screen or on Kerbal Engineer, um, it, that's just wrong. I have more than that. I don't know why it calculates that incorrectly, but it does. Um, anyway, that's not important. What um, is important is that we are going to be coming into Val, and you guys have seen this like 800 times, haven't you guys? Um, so I'm going to actually have to have to sidetrack a little bit, and I'm going to be introducing another poll that we have. So. Um, you guys can vote on the next series if you'd like. So I'm going to be starting another series on the channel. Um, it's going to be like a colonization series where we kind of just colonize a, 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 a celestial body and just, you know, space station, rovers, uh, bases, like, like race cars or something, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll planes if it's a, you know, it, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. That's, that's the point. It'll be cool. Um, and it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be like La life on Leif, like Matt Lowndes series, life on Leif. It's, it's gonna or, or destination Duna. It's gonna it's gonna be like that. So I will um, introduce your options um, in uh, uh, just a second because I want to kind of show you guys what happened here. So we are getting ready to stage, 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 and explosion, explosion. Oh, all the death! I think I hit the stage button twice. That's why we have quick save, folks. Always, always, always remember F9 is your friend. And then we do it again and it works. So, okay, here are your options, guys. So just keep in mind, all of these are basically the same, except for the, the celestial body and the name is different. So that's the only difference is the name. They're all, the same stuff is all gonna happen no matter where you guys choose, you know. Bases, rovers, space stations, all that fun stuff. Shuttles, all that kind of stuff. So. Here are your options. So, the first one is Populate Paul, which is, we're just going to be going to the Paul. It's a, the furthest out Julian moon. Option two is going to be Val Village, which is going to be on Val, which is where we are right now. So, um, that's option number two. Option number three is kind of a stupid one. Make Drez Great Again. Um, because Drez, I feel, is a very neglected place on this on KSP. We need to we need to make Drez great again, guys. We need to restore Drez to its former glory, and we need to pay our respects to Drez because it has been mismanaged for too long, too many bad deals. We need to make some good deals and get some good real estate out at Drez. And then your last option is going to be Kraken Kingdom, uh, which is going to be at Bop. Um, and I just completely talked past, but those those are your options, and then um, we'll, we'll get back to the video now. So, 
You might be curious as to what's going on, why on earth I have a command pod. I'm using the, com the command module to land on Val, and that's because I need to save my lander for other situations. So, the way the Saturn V works is that the, and then here's what's gonna happen here in a second, I accidentally hit the Windows key instead of that, and then I accidentally hit Z, and then we just go zooming up, and I waste a bunch of Delta V. This thing, by the way, does not have enough to land and take off, so keep that in mind. Uh, so we actually have to do some jetpack shenanigans later on, but uh, we've landed on Val now. And the reason we had to do this ridiculous kind of system is because we have we still have a lot of fuel left on the third stage, and we need to use all that fuel, right? Or else, you know, we're not going to be able to make it home. So and do a mun landing, and so now I'm going to try and there's if you, I'm trying to run now to get to the flag, because that uh, that was the flag that Val planted last Saturn V mission, so I'm like, hey, we could go visit there. And then I realized I could just jetpack and that'd be much easier. And kill my Kerbal. <laughs> uh, quick saves, quick saves, quick saves, quick saves, and then we can kind of do a very Kerbal method and then just kind of face plant our way across the surface of Val. Okay, so what I was saying, third stage Saturn V, it is very, very lot of delta V, but if I if I do the normal system where I grab the lander and then the lander lands, I'm gonna have to detach that stage because there's no docking port on it. It's a it's a decoupler. So if I detach the lander, then I'm gonna waste like all that delta V in that stage. Therefore, not being able to accomplish the mission. So the stupid solution that I came up with was just we keep the lander attached and then we just use the service module as our first lander or the command module it is not a great plan but it's really the only plan we got because you know we have to design around the limitations right or improvise around the design oversights would be a more accurate accurate way of putting it but uh, nevertheless we are uh, gonna redock with the mothership uh, and also that also creates other problems because the mothership now has n no reaction wheels and that thing has no fuel. So we need to jetpack our way up. And you might you might be asking, how do we have enough EVA fuel considering we just flew our way over to the um, the flag and then flew back and you know we must have wasted all our fuel. Well. Basically, you, you you refill your EVA fuel when you get into the in, into a craft. So kind of weird. You basically have infinite delta V. If you want an infinite delta V trick, there you go. You can use infinite delta V. But either way, uh, we are going to be redocking with the um, mothership, and that this becomes very 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 difficult because I have like look at my top right. There's like no EVA fuel left when I dock when I board, and well, it's full. So, well, <laughs> what are we going to do about that? We're just going to leave the Kerbal. All that work for nothing, right? All right, so that Kerbal is just going to die. Very, very unimportant Kerbal um, because I did not plan at all properly for this mission because I'm a very smart YouTuber. Very, very, very smart YouTuber. Now, yeah, the issue I was talking about without the reaction wheels. This thing has no reaction wheels and 30 units of monoprop that I need to use very, very wisely. So basically what I do to turn is I throttle the engine just a little bit so it can gimbal my way around. That, that That's how I turn this thing. Uh, so, you know, oh my, epileptic seizure, guys. And now, so it, 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 this thing is, this thing is really sketchy. This is, this is not, this is definitely not NASA approved behavior. Don't do this. <laughs> this is this is not a tutorial. This is a tutorial on how to not do things. Like this is do not this if you want if we want a, a video as to how not to do a mission like this. Here it is. You you you've come to the right place. But uh, nevertheless, because we have so much delta V, I can we, we have so much margin of error. So um, we're going to be getting a carbon capture burn a carbon encounter basically. And then what we're going to do after that is we are going to burn retrograde at Kerbin without um, air brakes because those are for plebs. And we are going to just uh, try and circularize around the MUN and get a landing in on the MUN, which 
just like all the other things on this mission, goes very interestingly. You guys will have to stay tuned in the next well, two minutes to see it. Uh, but luckily, we actually got a mun encounter right away, so we didn't have to do any sort of plus orbit nonsense. So we, we, we got a mun encounter right off the bat, and then we just kind of time warp down to our periaps, and then do we burn at carbon periaps so we can lower our uh, orbit height from like freaking drill height to uh, the mun. Getting dual height, guys. That sounded very cringy. Uh, so now we're going to be slowing down now, coming through our halfway point through the burn, coming through way past halfway point because we have very good TWR because uh, this stage there's no command module, which is not a situation that Saturn V is in very often. Uh, but uh, this time it is because I'm flying it and I'm uh, uh, bad. Another thing is bad. This is the same Saturn V I used on the um, How Far Can a Saturn V Go video. And it's also the same Saturn V that doesn't have any electricity generation. So it's the same Saturn V that only works if you cheat because a person. You, I'll explain it there, but and I, I and I was just I forgot to add it, and I started the flight, and I'm like, oh jeez, I forgot, and I'm just like, ah, screw it, and the same thing kind of went with this one landing. This thing has no landing legs because I the stage is not supposed to land, because you know, like I said, if I detach the lander, then it's you know game over. We don't have any fuel, <laughs> but my my mun landing is more of a more of a a mun a mun bounce, but. It, it counted, right guys? It, it, because I have no way of controlling my, my pitch. My only way of controlling it is through um, gimbal. So it was it, just a mess. And now we've run out of fuel in the, the stage. And now we have to use our lander to get ourselves back, which doesn't make any sense, but nothing does. And another thing is we have no parachutes or no heat shield on this lander. And no heat shield, actually. Not or. I need to learn my and ors clear, <laughs> clearly. Um, so, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. So we're gonna have to use our lander to do our, 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 our deorbit burn around Kerbin. And then once we get into the atmosphere, we're just gonna have to fire the engine to try and avoid overheating and to slow down. And then once we do that, our, 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 our method of Kerbal not dying or Kerbal landing is just gonna be jumping out and parachuting down. So very much an improvised flight and um, an improvised ending to a ridiculous flight uh, but we're we're burning the engine we actually wound up with that like about 400 meters a second of extra delta v because that's just we probably could have done a, a min miss landing as well that it would have been a little sketchy but it would have been maybe possible if especially if i had done aero brakes and gravity assist we could be we could have done like something ridiculous it would have been nuts but not not today, unfortunately. Um, and now we're just coming through our final bit of reentry heating, and then we can get ready to jump our Kerbals out way too late. Like, look, I still haven't jumped them. Still, 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 still. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should probably think about jumping my Kerbals. So parachute one and um, parachute two, and they have made it. So that's going to bring us basically to the end of the video when the Kerbals land. So do stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which will be a ELU space station. Um, as uh, you know, I, I said I might do that, and it generated some like enthusiasm. So we're going to do that tomorrow, and then we'll, we'll likely be starting the next series shortly thereafter. So if you want to vote, please vote. If you don't want to vote, don't vote. And that, that's basically all I have to say for this video. So, um, once this Kerbal lands, this video is going to be over. So, I'm just going to go ahead and um, say thanks. We almost have 150 subscribers. So, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Thanks for that, guys. Thanks for 100 uh, as well. But that, that's, that's, that was like a week ago I got that. Um, but, yeah, I almost had 150. Um, my first KSP video, um, Reusable Duna mission that's sitting at 2,000 views so that is thanks guys yeah thanks and that Kerbal just face planted its way across the ground and I'm gonna face plant my face into the desk about how stupid this video was right great transition guys all right so I'd like to thank you for watching we will see you next time please rate or comment to this video once again thank you for watching we will see you next time and bye